Hey guys, it's Sam and today I want to talk about some of my bookish buzzwords. So this is a video that Misty from the Book Rat did a while ago on her channel. I will link her channel and her video down below for this. I absolutely love her channel and she was one of the first booktubers I ever discovered. So I really wanted to do this kind of video for a while, like since I started my channel. I've wanted to do this video and I've just never gotten around to it. So if you've been around my channel for a while you probably know a lot of these but I'm going to tell you some of the buzzwords that I gravitate towards and then show you the books that I have bought because of these buzzwords and enjoyed usually but the stack because of a certain buzzword or because I knew they're about a certain topic. The first category of buzzwords should come as no surprise to any of you that have been around even a little while because I literally mention this in almost every video, but it's the criminal category. I love criminal characters of any variety and here are some that I particularly gravitate towards. So the first and probably tied for number one is the assassins. And these are all the books that I have bought because there have been assassins listed in the synopsis. So first we have the Throne of Glass series by Sarah J Maas, Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight. I'm hoping to get Air of Fire soon, but obviously one of the more popular assassin books here on booktube. Then we have The Assassin's Curse and The Pirate's Wish by Cassandra Rose Clark. I've actually done a review and gush on these books, so I obviously really enjoyed them, which I will link here and here for you to go check out. We have Graceling by Kristen Kishur. I absolutely love this whole series. But Graceling I think is still my favorite. It's about a girl who is graced with the ability of killing and I love this character. She's definitely like an assassin type character and I have done discussions on this series but that was when I first started my channel so I might redo them because I don't think this series gets enough love and I just adore it so so much so I might redo it now that I'm a little more comfortable with booktube and stuff like that. But if you like like the lady killer type characters definitely check this series out. It does not get enough hype. Then we have Grave Mercy by Robin Lefevre. This is the first book in the His Fair Assassins trilogy. I have not read the next two books yet. I plan on it. I just for some reason haven't picked them up which is crazy because again Assassins. It's like about three separate girls. It's a companion series and they each have been kind of raised and trained in a convent. I always almost say nunnery when talking about this book. That's not what it's called. Raised in a convent to become assassins. Like it's the convent for death basically. So it's a really cool concept. These books are really good from what I've heard about the next two books. I loved this one and I gave this one five out of five stars I'm pretty sure. So if you're into assassins, Grave Mercy's a book for you. Then we have City of a Thousand Dolls by Miriam Forrester. I have not read this book yet but I heard about it on Epic Reads Tea Time and it's about a girl who's raised in a city of like basically criminals but a lot of them are assassins. So that's all I need to know. If, you, if there's an assassin in a synopsis, I'm picking it up. Okay, that's what this whole video is about. Yeah. And we have Death Swarm by Leah Cypress, another book that I haven't read yet, but it's about a girl who's a sorceress or a magician or witch or something, and she is kind of exiled from her people to go and train this group of assassins. Yeah, you see? See? The best one on this whole list, according to me, is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. This is a fantasy series. I have done a review and gush on it, which I will link here and here. Review here, spoiler free, gush here for you to check out. So I'm not going to talk about it but one of the characters in here is an assassin. So sold me on that and I absolutely love this book. This is tied for the number one book of the year for me for sure. Next buzzword of mine in the criminal category is thieves. Thieves are probably my number one tied with assassins. Ath assassins and thieves are my favorite if you combine them. It's even better. So these are some of the books that I picked up because of thieves being in the synopsis. So I expected there to be more than this but these are all in series so there's going to be more books when this series have all come out when I've bought the series for these. But there are more thief books than this but these are the ones that I currently own. So first is The Thief and The Queen of Atolia and these are the first and second book in the Queen's Thief series I believe. I think there's like five or four books in this series. I've only read The Thief so far and I liked it. It was like a three star book. It was a good first book. I'm not usually a big fan of first books so it was good for a first book. It really set the groundwork. These are really short books so I really enjoy this one. I'm looking forward to getting to this one. I've read about 10 pages in it but I had to put it down for another reading commitment. So I've heard really good things about this series. It's an older series. I think it came out in the mid 90s, maybe early 2000s, maybe. So it's a really good fantasy series. If you like thieves, the main character is a thief and there's like its own kind of unique mythology in this series too. So I would really recommend these. These next books I haven't read yet or maybe I've read this one because I'm pre-filming this because I'm gone in the holidays right now. So this is previous me. So by now I might have actually read this but we'll see. That is Avalon by Mindy Arnett. 
This is the first book in a series and it is a science fiction series about a group of teenagers who steal spaceships. So it's like Grand Theft Auto in space, but that that synopsis, Grand Theft Auto in space, yeah, yeah. And the last one I've mentioned before, but is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. I'm going to be reading this in January for sure. I'm making the time for it. This is the first book in the Gentleman Bastard series, and there are three books out right now, but it's basically a fantasy Ocean's Eleven. Yes. Yes. So I'm really excited about this, and everybody that I trust about science fiction and fantasy says this is amazing, so you can't you can't really argue with that. And the last set of books is kind of in the miscellaneous category. So this is like where the pirates and the mafia people and that kind of thing fit in because there's not really a ton of books about that. One of my main complaints is there are not enough pirate books and I need more of them that aren't like cheesy romance novels. So if you guys have any recommendations, link them down below. I know the second book in the Gentleman Bastard series has pirates in it and I think I know Inda has pirates in it. I might be speaking Latin to some of you, but I really need more pirate books. So this is where the pirates fit in and like the mafia people and all that. So these are three books that I have that fit into the miscellaneous category. First is The Pirate's Wish, which I've already talked about. And again, I will link the videos down below and everything for you to check out. But this is the second book in the Assassin's Curse duology. And it's because one of the characters is an assassin and one is a pirate. So two of my favorite things. Why do you think I loved it? Next book is All These Things I've Done by Gabriel Zevin. This is the first book in a trilogy and the main character in this story is part of a mafia family and she, something bad has happened. I think her family or herself has been accused of a murder and it's a little crazy. I think it's in like a dystopian society. I haven't read this book yet but I've heard a lot of good things about Gabriel Zevin so I'm interested to see how I feel about this. I'll pick it up at some point. I'm not in a big hurry to read it right now but again, mafia family, yeah. Yeah, it speaks to me. And lastly is Firebug by Lish McBride. I have not read this yet either, but it's about a girl who has fire abilities, like elemental abilities, and she's running from a magical mafia. Magic. Mafias. Yeah. Yeah. The next category is a shorter one, but also a favorite of mine, and it's basically books that take place between life and death or a character that can go between life and death or kind of travels in like a river sticks type situation where they can kind of go between I like that. I like that a lot. And I've read a couple series that have to do with that. These books all have characters that can kind of travel between life and death. The first is The Archive by Victoria Schwab. I actually did a review and gush on this when I first started my channel, so I will link that here or down below. It's a very old video. It's like one of my first or second or third videos maybe, but I really liked this. It's one of the first books I read after starting booktube and the girl can kind of travel between life and death. She is a keeper and basically she has to go into this area between life and death and lock away histories that escape from the library. So this is all the like technical terms that have to do with this book, but histories are kind of like ghosts, but really they're just memories of people. So they're not really people, they're not really ghosts, but they are always trying to escape and she has a responsibility along with some other people that have the same job to put them back into the library where they are kind of archived and kept. So I really enjoy this series. I haven't read the second book in the series yet. I think it's going to be three books, but the third one isn't published yet or isn't even being written yet. Not really sure. But I really liked this book when I read it and it really appealed to that kind of river sticks situation. Stop crying. Stop crying. You can't come in here right now. Stop it. Next is the Abhorsen series by Garth Nix. I have only read Sabriel, Lyriel, and Abhorsen. This is Clarial, which is the prequel novel that just came out in October, but I haven't read it yet because I'm not really sure if I can read it without rereading these two. I've read Sabriel a few times and recently, but I'm not sure if I can read this one without reading these just to kind of understand some of the foreshadowing and stuff like that that's going on definitely in this book. But I love this series. The main character is an Abhorsen and basically she has to make sure that the dead stay dead. So she can travel between life and death. She has a series of bells. It's a fantasy series. She has a series of bells and magic and she can kind of bind them to death. They're always kind of trying to get out and escape and they're kind of like not good, almost like zombie-esque characters, the dead that are trying to escape, which is weird that I like it. But I read it a while ago and I guess it's just nostalgic for me because usually I would not pick anything like that up. But it's done really well and the fantasy world is super interesting and the characters are really, really amazing. So if you haven't given this series a chance, do because it is so so good. So I'm looking forward to finally reading Clarial. This book was talked about for like 10 years because this series is fairly old and finally it was released this year and I've just been like looking at it like I'll read you soon my precious. The next category is the retelling category and you guys know I love my retellings so there's gonna be a lot of books in this category. 
So first is the mythology category of retellings. I absolutely adore Greek mythology, Greek and Roman mythology. Surprisingly enough, I haven't read the Percy Jackson series, but I plan on potentially reading it next year. So don't yell at me for that, because I'd have way more books if I did read the Percy Jackson series, but I haven't yet. So I will, I will, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to do it. So these are all the books so far that have to do with mythology retellings. First is Everneath by Brody Ashen, which I actually haven't read yet, but it is a Hades Persephone retelling. For those of you that's been around a while, I love Hades and Persephone. It's mainly the books that I gravitate towards within the mythology category, honestly, is Hades and Persephone because they're one of my, like, ultimate OTPs. Yeah, I have a lot of love for them. So this is the first book in a series. I haven't heard much about it, but, I mean, look at that cover. Like, that's, yeah, that's gonna appeal to me a lot. The second set of books is the Goddess Test series by Amy Carter. So that's the Goddess Test, Goddess Interrupted, and the Goddess Inheritance. There's also a set of novella bind-ups that I have, but I'm reading them right now, currently. So I'm hoping to have a review up for this. So it might be up before this video or it might be up after, but I will post that here if it is already up. So you can go and check that out. But this is about a girl, Kate, whose mother is dying and her dying wish is to go back to her hometown. They go back there and Kate kind of falls into this test to be the goddess of the underworld, the new Persephone. I really enjoy them. I find them a lot of fun. And again, it's Hades and Persephone. So of course I had to pick it up. Next is the Starcross series by Josephine Angelini, which is Starcross, Dreamless, and Goddess. And these are a Helen of Troy retelling, but I think a lot of other mythology gets mixed into them throughout the series. I have not read them yet. A Helen of Troy is another myth that I really enjoy, so interested to see where these go because I think they might kind of, like I said, take a little more of a windy, twisty path through other mythology. So if you guys know of any more mythology retellings besides the Percy Jackson books, I know I'm getting to them. If you guys know of any more of those, I will definitely check them out. I also just picked up the Medusa trilogy. I forget, Sweet something maybe? I'm not really sure what it's called but I just picked those up. So any kind of Medusa retellings, I really like Medusa as a mythological character and Persephone Hades stuff. If you guys know any more of that, comment down below and let me know and help a girl out because I need more of it. <laughs> Next category is the fairy tale retelling category and I probably have the most books from this category. I love, love fairy tale retellings so much. And these are all of the books that I have on fairy tale retellings, yeah should be bigger, but it's not yet. First book is Tiger Lily by Jodie Lynn Anderson. This is a book all in Tiger Lily's perspective from Peter Pan. Then there's Of Poseidon and Of Triton by Anna Banks. The last book is also Of Neptune, which is in a order coming from Book Outlet for me right now, but this is not really a retelling of The Little Mermaid, but I stuck it in here because I didn't want to give it its own category, but it's, you know, like the mermaid legends and stuff, and I really like these books. I've already read these two, and I really enjoy them. I get them like four stars. They're just really fun, and I feel a lot of nostalgia for them for some reason, so these are really good if you really want like a good, fun mermaid book. Then two more fairy tale retellings I haven't read yet, and that is Of Beast and Beauty by Stacey J and Cruel Beauty by Rosamund Hodge. These are both Beauty and the Beast retellings, which I've heard mixed things about. But Beauty and the Beast was one of my favorite Disney movies growing up. It continues to be, I know it doesn't stay to like the original story of like Beauty and the Beast and stuff, but I love it. So I really want some more Beauty and the Beast retellings, and I'm hoping to pick these up within the next year and kind of see what I think. I think there's gonna be a little bit darker of fairy tale retellings, which is kind of fitting for the story, honestly. And we have Entwined by Heather Dixon. This I've heard about a lot. It was really popular like a few years ago on booktube. I heard about this first from Misty from the Book Rat, who I mentioned earlier. And this is a retelling of the 12 Dancing Princesses story, which I'm not actually familiar with, but it's a fairy tale retelling and it came highly recommended. So it's kind of nice to go in blind and not really know what the story is going to be about because a lot of these are very familiar stories. So this will be kind of like a new experience for me. Then we have Strands of Bronze and Gold by Jane Nickerson. This is the first book that I ever reviewed here on my channel and my first video. It's very awkward, but I will link it down below for you to check out my awkwardness. So, but this is a retelling of the Bluebeard story and I really liked it. It was like a three stars. Again, another recommendation from Misty of the Book Rat. If you like fairy tale retellings, check out her channel. I mean, check out her channel anyway, but like for fairy tale retellings, it's golden. So I really enjoyed this book. It had like a nice eerie feeling. If you know the Blackbeard myth, it's kind of creepy. So this is good. And I mean, this cover is still gorgeous and I just absolutely adore it. Then no surprise, obviously, I have Cinder, Scarlet, and Crest from the Lunar Chronicles series. The last book, Winter, is coming out next year. And I also have already pre-ordered the novella, Fairest, which is told in the villain's perspective of this book. But this is a retelling of Cinderella, The Little Red Riding Hood, and Rapunzel. 
And the last category of retellings I have is actually Jane Austen retelling. So there is a large number of Austenian retellings, but I usually stick to like the fantasy Austenian retellings. Sadly, I haven't read any of these yet. So these are the two series that I have that fall under the Jane Austen retelling category. The first is For Darkness Shows the Stars and Across the Star Up Sea by Diana Peterfrund. I include this one even though it technically isn't an Austen retelling, but it is set in the same world as this one, which is an Austen retelling. So this one is a retelling of Persuasion by Jane Austen, and it's set in like a science fiction utopian world. I've heard really good things about it, so I'm hoping to pick this up really early in the new year. The next one I'm not really sure if it falls under the retelling category, but it does fall under the Jane Austen category, so I stuck it in here, and that is the Shades of Milk and Honey trilogy by Mary Robinette Kowal. It's Shades of Milk and Honey, Glamour and Glass and Without a Summer, and this is set in a Austinian Regency period world, and the main character has glamour, which is a type of magic. I'm not really sure exactly how it works. It might be the typical glamour where, like, you make yourself look better. I'm not really sure how exactly it works because I haven't read them yet, but it sounds really good and I've heard really good things about it and it's just it's a cool concept so I'm interested to see how I feel about these and I really hope to read them soon. Story of my life with all the books I'm showing you today. The next category is the superheroes category and this is kind of like original superhero stories. So while I do really enjoy actual superhero Marvel DC that kind of thing I also really enjoy like new just kids with superpowers that kind of thing. These are all the books that I have where so the main characters have superhero abilities. The first book is Secret by Lindsay Smith which is about a bunch of psychics working for the KGB and Russia during the 1960s. I've already read this so you will hear about this more in my December wrap-up. Next is The Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken. This is about a group of kids who have superhero abilities and actually have been put in concentration camps in a kind of dystopian world and it's really really well loved so I'm hoping to get to the series soon and it sounds really cool and it sounds like the powers that they have are really interesting. Next is The Young Elites by Marie Lu. I've already done a review on this which I will post here. I was a little disappointed with the series but I plan on continuing it. The main character has abilities that she got because of surviving a blood fever along with a group of other teenagers so it's an interesting concept. I just didn't really like the execution in this book, but I'm looking forward to the future books to see if they kind of change my mind on it. Lastly, we of course have the Shatter Me series by Todd Amafi, which is Shatter Me, Unravel Me, and Ignite Me. And I absolutely love this series. The main character in here has the ability to basically kill people with her touch. She's kind of like a rogue character from X-Men, and I loved this series. I will post my review and gush here for you to check out. The last category we have is time travel. And these are the books that I bought because of time travel. So first we have A Thousand Pieces of You by Claudia Gray. This is kind of more dimension jumping and alternate universe jumping, but I put it in the time travel category because I didn't want to give it its own category, and it feels kind of like time travel at points, but I've already done a review on this, which I will link right here. Next is the Ruby Red Trilogy by Kirsten Gear. There's Ruby Red, Sapphire Blue, and Emerald Green. I didn't like this series as much as I wanted to. I have already done a review and gripe on this series, which I will post here as well as down below. These next two books I actually haven't read yet, and they are both adult novels. The first book is Overseas by Beatrice Williams, and I'm not really sure if this really constitutes as time travel, but in the story two young people, I think they're like in their mid-twenties, fall in love, and it's a kind of opposites attract situation, but somehow they find out that this might not have been the first time that they fell in love. That they may have fallen in love also back in like World War II and before that, so I don't really know if it's like a reincarnation thing, or a time travel thing. I think I've seen it in like time travel lists, which is why I picked this up, but it's kind of like a love story that defies time and space and that kind of thing. So it kind of falls into this category, and I haven't really heard much about it, but it sounds really nice, and it's a contemporary adult love story, so I hope to get into this soon. It just feels very wintry to me, so I'm hoping to pick this up during the winter sometime. The last book is The River of No Return by B. Ridgway, and this is about a man that time travels. He is from the Napoleonic War period, and he wakes up in modern day, I'm pretty sure, London, and there's a Time Traveler's Guild that is a part of this. So I haven't heard a ton about this, but the cover is gorgeous. <laughs> That's mostly why I picked it up. I saw this on Book Outlet a while ago, and I just checked the synopsis, and it said time travel, and I was sold. So... I don't really know, but it has really good ratings on Goodreads, so if any of you have read this book or overseas, comment down below and let me know what you think of it. Alright guys, that is it for all of my buzzwords. Comment down below and let me know what some of your buzzwords are that you will always pick books up if they are in the synopsis. I also plan on doing a deal breakers video at some point for all of the words that I will see in synopsises and not pick up. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!